Hello, detectives. Welcome to the podcast. If this is your first time here, I'm the Deception Detective. I'm an attorney trained in statement analysis, and this channel is all about teaching you to spot lies, grifts, hoaxes, and other forms of deception. In today's video, we're going to look at one of the favorites on the channel, Nadia Amine. And I didn't even know about this, uh, but she did a lie detector test a month ago. I have not watched this at all yet. Um, so we're going to react to it together and see if we can spot the lies she tells, right? If she tells any, I'm assuming she's going to tell some lies and see if statement analysis agrees with the lie detector test results. And I want to thank uh, Ryan Link for actually suggesting this video to me. Um, I actually thought he was joking when he first mentioned it. So when I was thinking of a video today, I actually Googled it and was very happy to see that. Well, not Googled it, searched for it on YouTube and was happy to see that it's real. So let's dig in. And before we dig in, um, just a brief note about lie detector tests. They are fallible, right? The same as any sort of thing that's designed to detect deception. But um, uh, they, what they can do is show you when someone is sensitive about a topic. Stay, same with statement analysis, right? If someone's stuttering or pausing or evading a question, you can tell that they're sensitive about that question. And then you have to dig a little bit deeper to determine if they're just sensitive about something or if they're being deceptive about it and lying to you. So a lot goes into lie detector tests. Really, just like um, statement analysis, it's a good tool to point you in the direction where you should investigate further, right? So if you're picking up the cues that someone's being deceptive, um, you know what to look into deeper. All right, let's listen. Okay. Did you find oh, her? I already know the first question chat's yeah. going to ask. Bro, easily. Okay, guys, like, if I involve you in the questions, don't be mad. It's just, like, I don't okay. tea. <laughs> Are you ready? Mm hmm Is there some days you wish I wasn't in your life? No. That's true. Oh. Do you fantasize about men? First of all, when... Um, an interrogator is doing a lie detector test. You have to get a baseline. So I'm sure they cut that part out. Otherwise, this test is moot, right? She could be drunk. She could be nervous already. She could, there could be a number of things that would affect her. But typically what a lie detector will do, right, is they ask a bunch of questions that are easy to answer, right? To easy to answer honestly. Like, for example, what is your name? Is your name Nadia? What year were you born? Right, ones are easy to verify, and then they get a baseline, and then they start throwing in the questions that someone might lie to. So I'm going to rewind here. Let's just see. I guess they edited that part out. Okay. Did you find oh. her? So if you're just listening on podcast mode, the lie detector administrator, right, the guy who's going to give her a lie detector test, I already know is the first question up. Chat's going to yeah. ask. Bro, easily. Okay, guys, like, if I involve you in the questions, don't be mad. It's just, like, I don't okay. tea. <laughs> Are you ready? And then the video kind of jump cuts. So hopefully this was done correctly, right? Otherwise, it's just going to be all on us to tell if she's lying or not because this lie detector wasn't um, set to a baseline, right? So anything this guy says is true or false isn't really going to help us. Ready? Mm -hmm. Is there some days you wish I wasn't in your life? No. That's true. Oh. Do you fantasize about men? Like right now, like being with a guy or just like, have I ever? Just in so already, if we're just going on statement analysis, answering a question with a question is a sign of deception. So all these questions so far are low stakes. But the point of this video is to get into more of the nitty gritty statement analysis techniques to tell if someone's lying. Um, because Nadia is such a bad liar, right? I think that's one of the reasons she adopted trolling about cheating because it's easier to troll, right? Because when you troll, you just tell the truth, but you pretend it's a joke, right? You pretend you're in on the joke when in reality, you're just telling the truth. 
So Nadia is a very bad liar. So she makes lots of obvious mistakes. So she's a great person to learn from when you're trying to learn the basics of statement analysis. And uh, at this point, I could have an entire playlist on Nadia, right? If you followed my channel for some time, you know that I looked at her swatting hoax. I've looked at multiple interviews she's done where she denied cheating. And uh, she's a reliable uh, example of a bad liar, right? She doesn't really ever improve at lying. All right, so here she gives a great example of answering a question with a question. When someone does that, they're usually buying time to think up a lie, right? So if, someone, if you say, do you fantasize about men? And they say, do I fantasize about men? Right, they're stalling for time to make up a lie. Or they're stalling of time because they're sensitive, don't want to reveal something, and they're trying to evade the question. And if you saw my last video about Justin Trudeau, um, I'll just quickly um, round out this point. There are two other types of answering a question with a question, right? So one is to stall. The second form of answering a question with a question is uh, to try to find out what the interviewer knows, right? Like, have you heard anything about me fantasizing about men? Why, why would you say I would fantasize about men, right? Because they're trying to find out what the interviewer knows, right? So that's the second type. The third type of answering a question with a question is to trial balloon a theory. For example, let's say she was lesbian, right? Uh, don't you know, or she's claiming to be lesbian, let's say, right? Don't you know I'm lesbian? How could I fantasize about men? All right, so now she's, that would be sending out a trial balloon, a potential alibi to see how the audience takes it. And then typically with trial balloons, if the audience doesn't buy it, they'll send up another trial balloon. And that's how you can tell it's, a trial balloon, right? Because they're just throwing stuff at the wall. Then she might say, you know, um, like I, I took a vow of chastity. I'm super religious. How could I have fantasies? Right. So that's answering a question with a question. That's true. Oh. Do you fantasize about men? Like right now, like being with a guy or just like, have I ever? Just in general. Like does, no, right now. does it turn you on? No. Oh. So obviously this, the problem with um, this uh, uh, guy who's administering the, uh, the test, the lie detector test, is Nadia hired him to do this, right? So he's not going to, just like if, if someone hires you to DJ a party, you're going to play the music they want you to play. So clearly he's not treating this like a serious sit-down interrogation. For example, the girls threw three different questions at Nadia, right? One was, do you fantasize about men generally? Are you fantasizing about a man right now? And I think a third girl gave some other variation, right? So there's not much to glean from this um, as far as what this guy says is true or false. Really, it's going to be on us as statement analysts to figure out if she's telling the truth or not, especially if it gets to questions about cheating. Regarding this question, do you fantasize about men? Obviously, she was sensitive about it, uh, So the way she tried to avoid the question. So maybe she has a crush on someone, or maybe she uh, said she's lesbian. I don't know what the full story is, but clearly, if I were there interviewing her, I would flag this as something to circle back to that she's sensitive about if I really cared about finding out the answer, right? We're using this as a template to study statement analysis techniques, not necessarily to figure out if anything Nadia is saying here is super important, right? Oh, have you ever thought about Fousey? No. Crew again? Oh, yeah. No. I don't know who Fousey is. The question was, have you ever thought about Fousey? That's a yes or no question. No. So she's never thought about someone she knows. I feel like stuff is edited out um, of this because that's that's clearly a, a lie, right? If you know someone, you've thought about them. She might be implying, have you ever thought about him sexually? But that's not the question she asked. So I feel like the lie detector administrator is just 
going along with the flow. And these girls are really screwing up what could have been a much more interesting Q and a with Nadia. Nadia, did you ever use cheats on call of duty? Okay, here we go. Finally, a question uh, you guys will care about and me, right? If, if you've watched my channel for some time, you know that I am convinced Nadia is a cheater on Warzone. And in fact, I've shown multiple times how she actually admitted to cheating with her own words, despite herself, which is called an embedded admission. So let's listen to the question, and then let's listen to Nadia's answer. And frankly, I don't really care what the lie detector guy says. What about Fuzi? No. Crew again? Okay. Nadia, did you ever use cheats on Call of Duty? No. True. Oh. All right, this is staged. <laughs> this is staged. So what the lie detector guy did is he put out his thumb, almost like a uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Gladiator, where it wasn't clear whether he's going to do an up or a down, and then gave it up to that. All right, let's listen. Okay. Nadia, did you ever use cheats on Call of Duty? No. True. Oh, oh my God, bro. I was like, that All right. When it comes to statement analysis, as I always say, if you're interviewing someone, and I think this is one of my most underrated videos, is how to interview like a detective. And that video actually does revolve around Nadia in an interview she did with Jake Lucky, where he was actually asking her about cheats. In this case, if you want to find out if Nadia is cheating, you don't ask a simple yes or no question, right? Did you ever cheat? Because it's very easy for a liar to say yes or no. It's much more complicated for a liar to give an open-ended uh, open answer an open-ended response, because then you can actually find out what they are prioritizing, right? So she might say, you know, so a good open-ended question would be, why do people think you cheat? Please explain that, right? So something that doesn't put them on the defensive, but allows them to give an open-ended response, right? Describe why people think you cheat. And the beauty of that is you get them talking, right? As a statement analyst, the more words you have to analyze, the better. And you can tell embedded admissions, which we've done with Nadia, but you can also see what they're sensitive about by what they bring up. For example, if we ask Nadia, why do people think you cheat on Warzone? And she says something like, uh, you know, people must think I use a Cronus device because my shots are so on point and my aim is so good, right? In that case, you didn't plant the word Cronus device in her mouth, right? She brought it up on her own, which indicates that she's sensitive and we should maybe analyze the footage to see if there was a Cronus device or ask follow-up questions. Um, if you want an in-depth analysis of how to interview like a detective, where you go from open-ended questions uh, to more narrow questions and avoiding bad interview questions that lots of people trip up on, I suggest watching that video. In this case, the girls asked her a very easy yes or no question. She said no. That's an easy for a liar to do. And she kind of revealed herself in the way she reacted. She was so surprised that the uh, the lie detector analyst gave her a thumbs up saying her no is true. right? And then if you called her out on that, if you said, hey, why, why were you so surprised that the lie detector indicated that you don't cheat? She would say, I'm trolling, right? So trolling is a great catch-all for bad liars because no matter what they do, they can just say, I did it on purpose, right? I deliberately did that. So as far as I'm concerned right now, that, that question was too easy to answer, right? It was a binary yes or no question. It's easy to lie and say yes or no. It'd be a lot better if it was a little bit broader, That would have, like, just... I'm, he said something. Do you think I'm a good sister? Yeah. Okay. Oh. That's like you rude. You didn't pass. <gasps> oh, Wait, I'm no. actually 
I'm gonna cry. I'm here for you. Can you see yourself marrying Azra? Yes. True. Um, have you ever thought? All right, so we've definitely seen that this is chopped up. Um, there was a clear cut there. So hopefully we get some good questions that give us some good stuff to analyze rather than these uh, softballs. But that is the other problem with lie detectors is that it really is uh, binary. So you're usually asking yes or no questions. And if the, the lie detector analyst isn't, uh, never got a baseline, it isn't taking it seriously, there's not much to glean from it. Well, let's just keep watching. Maybe they'll ask her some more elaborate questions, like informally. I thought about that one girl in Vegas who opened up your uh, drink. Uh, have you ever thought about them doing something sexual to you within the past month? Dude, that was the most that was, dude, ass dude. question, bro. Sorry. Should I not ask that? No, no, it's fine. Wait, wait, that's wait, crazy. Wait. Hold on, wait, wait. She can ask about exes, but I can't. You didn't say there was any off limits. You should have announced that. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that I'm not answering any questions about exes just because okay. you didn't. That's fair. Okay. When you're in an argument with somebody, <laughs> all right, you argue with somebody. Do you do you find that you're always right? No. True. Would you choose Azra over your career? But I feel like if you if someone really loves you, they would never let you yeah. do that ever. Okay, but that's the question. Would you choose your career? I would choose you over my career. I would, but I, I, I would hope that you wouldn't let me do that. Two underscore short one. I don't get this. Is Azra the girl there? Like, has Nadi actually started claiming that she's lesbian? I don't get... Uh, I don't get the question. That might actually be the reason she was so sensitive about the earlier question where she said where she gave this round, right right where she was asked if she fantasizes about boys. And then uh, she answered the question with the question. And I said that indicates sensitivity. We might have hit the nail on the head there, right? And I actually said that, I think, right? If she claims to be a lesbian now, it would make sense that she would be sensitive about that question. Uh, so I don't know. Is Does Nadia claim that she is lesbian? Please let me know in the comments because that means we we nailed we nailed that first question despite this uh, lie detector guy. One donated five dollars. Oh, did you get right. kicked out of the nuke squad house? No, I did not get kicked out of the nuke squad house. All right, have have you have you ever cheated on somebody in your life? Never cheated on anyone. True. Wow. Your turn. Have you ever thought about kissing? One second, I think there's another little statement analysis lesson to learn here. Cheated on somebody in your life. And donated oh, five dollars. Did never. you get kicked out of the nuke squad house? No, I did not get kicked out of the nuke squad house. All right. Have All right. Pay attention to her answer here. Right. I was just browsing through the comments, but I think I heard a good example here. Have, have you have you ever cheated on somebody in your life? Never. Have you ever cheated on somebody in your life? Cheated on anyone. So Nadia answered, never cheated on anyone. And this is something we've seen Meghan Markle do, and it is a sign of deception. So the human brain does not like to lie. And whenever you see a missing eye, it's a sign of deception, right? It means that the person's not putting themselves into their answer. It's actually a way of being non-responsive. Saying never cheated on anyone actually means nothing, right? And the brain understands it means nothing. It is not a denial. Whereas saying I have never cheated on someone, I never cheat on anyone is much stronger, right? So when people drop um, the I or the we or even drop, um, you know, any sort of pronoun, it should be a red flag, so I think she gave a weak response here. I'm not counting on this lie detector guy to pick it up. Uh, but I think that that was um, a deceptive response, right? Nadia is, I don't know, 20-something years old. When we speak, I is one of the most common words we use, right? If I'm telling you a story, 
it's almost not, oh, up upwards of 99% I say I when I'm talking about myself. To drop the I is very rare. It means that the brain is trying to avoid telling a lie, right? So it might seem like a big leap. Some people think, well, like, I, I drop eyes all the time. You really don't. If you pay attention to your daily life, when someone's talking about themselves, they say I consistently. Or they, if they missed I, they'll go back and correct it. So when someone drops an I, it's a huge red flag. And just like any of these rules, does it mean 100% that they're lying? No. Right? We need multiple signs of deception to conclude that someone is being deceptive. However, it's a red flag. It should be noted. And if I were there, right, I, I would have caught that and I would have pressed on it, right? So if you sense that someone's sensitive about it or they might be lying, that's the road you want to go down, right? You want to make a note of it and circle back to it. So let's listen again. Listen how she drops the eye from her response. Of the nuke squad house? No, I did not get kicked out of the nuke squad house. All right. Have, have, you, have you ever cheated on somebody in your life? Never cheated on anyone. Never cheated on anyone. No I. And there's there's no I there. She's not talking about herself. She could say anything. So uh, that is one you should be able to catch in real time, right? So if you watch my old videos, I, we did deep, deep dives in the statement analysis, picking apart individual words, looking at recurring words, um, how often things are brought up, right? Like we were doing in a, like we were doing a court case, right? Like we were analyzing a statement to decide how to cross-examine someone. But in this new format, I'm watching it alongside you. And I feel like if you watch enough of my videos, you should also be able to catch this stuff in real time. And I've even seen in the comments that lots of you guys catch stuff that I miss, right? Which is great. There's so much, so many layers to statement analysis that there's no way I could point out every single thing that happens. Um, but the dropped I is definitely one that I caught even when I was scrolling through the comments. I was trying to find out if anyone was talking about whether or not Nadia has claimed to be a lesbian, which is doubtful based on her response about uh, whether or not she ever fantasizes about boys. Uh, but th I still caught that, right? So when someone drops an eye, that should be a big red flag. It is very, very rare to happen. If it happens, you need to look into it. True. Wow. Your turn. Have you ever thought about kissing Kitty? No. <sighs> <laughs> no, that's a lie. That's actually a lie. That's actually a lie. No, this thing's rigged. That's actually a lie. That's, uh, no. Have you ever gotten physical with someone? Yes. Like, oh, punch fight? them. Yeah, oh, like no. Actually, wait. Yes. No, but I think I I had my arm pulled back and I got my shoulder popped out because I didn't get to punch them. So no. The other problem with um, these interviewers, right, and you can apply this rule generally, is vague questions are bad if you're trying to guide someone down a certain path, right? So if you say, have you ever been physical with someone, that's an easy yes, right? I could have patted someone on the head, that's being physical, right? Or I could have knocked someone out, that's also physical, right? I could have taken them to bed, that's also physical. So if something can be interpreted vaguely and broadly, you can count on a good liar to answer in the way that benefits them, right? So um, if you have a good liar, Nadia is not a good liar, but if you have a good one, you need to be specific with your questions if you actually want to catch them. And that's why starting general is good because you get them to commit to a story and then you slowly start narrowing down on where you detect sensitivity. So it's a skill that can be learned. If you have the opportunity to sit down and interview someone, nine times out of 10, you should be able to get to the truth if you have the skills of interviewing and actually listening to the responses, right? So no. True. <laughs> All right. Have you ever hooked up with a big content creator? Yes. True. Damn. Hooking up is another vague term, right? Do I particularly, and this is my point, right? I don't particularly care whether or not Nadia has or hasn't. I'm just pointing out the lessons from this. And Nadia is a fun subject to study. 
Um, but as far as interview technique goes, right, hooking up is another vague term. It can be, right, she could have done a collaboration with swag, which she has done, which is technically hooking up to do something or making out or, right, there's a million ways to um, interpret hooking up. So these are bad questions. Oh, ooh, no, I'm kidding. Um, have you ever been in love? No. Damn. Not passing on that one. Oh! Oopsie donated $5. Did you ever talk or did stuff with people in Nuke Squad? No, I never did. Do you see... So... What's that's another bad question, right? Did she say, Did you ever talk with people in Nuke Squad? He did five dollars. Did you ever talk or did stuff with people in Nuke Squad? No, I never did. Talk or did stuff? These are really vague questions, so that's another lesson to take away here, right? If you ask a vague question, you can expect an honest response <coughs> because the subject. And sorry, I have a sore throat. I've had it for the past week. I apologize. So if you ask a vague question, you can expect an honest response because the subject can interpret your vague question to mean whatever they want it to be in order to answer honestly. And that's one reason the oath you take um, before going on the stand is so genius, right? It's, it's truly art artful in the way it's designed, right? So do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? In other words, do you swear to be honest, the whole truth, right? So swear not to lie by omission by leaving stuff out, and then nothing but the truth. So not adding extra details to try to manipulate the truth, right? So it's a very clean, uh, well-crafted, oath for people to take to be honest and what liars can do is right if they're not under oath they can tell the truth but not necessarily the whole truth right so they can misinterpret your question deliberately and answer truthfully but they're not telling the whole truth or what they can do is they can tell the truth but also tell a lie at the same time do you see these people around you in your life forever. No. IDK donated $5. Is it Reski donated $5. Would you ever have a threesome with Azra and Fauzi? No. True. Whoa. Did, did you see that? Would you ever have no. a threesome with Azra and Kitty? No. True. Oh! Would, Would you, you have a threesome with Azra and somebody else? No. Fail. Oh! oh! Would you do more than kiss Kitty? No. True. Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. Have you ever done anything with Aiden Ross? See, these questions are so vague, right? Would you ever do more than kiss, right? Is holding hands more? So it's vague. Would you ever do anything with Aiden Ross? Anything like uh, what a phone call, go jogging with him, right? So that's the problem with vague questions that the responses really mean nothing. And this sort of ties back to yesterday's episode with Justin Trudeau. If you're actually inter interviewing someone to get to the truth, you have to listen to their responses. And if they're not being responsive, you have to redirect them. That's why cross-examination in court looks so contentious, because it really is a battle, right? It doesn't have to be a shouting match. It's really a battle of wits, of actually listening to what someone's saying and crafting a question that's, that they cannot evade, right? That requires them to answer honestly without allowing them to lie by omission or by allowing them to add extra details or extra preface or caveats that let them get away with telling the truth, but distorting it. So it doesn't give a clear picture of what actually happened. Five dollars. Have you ever used cheats in any Call of Duty game? Have I ever done anything with Adam Ross? 
No. Aaron donated five dollars. True. Have you had sex with actually? So she's never done anything with Aiden Ross. I think we saw in my neon video a video of her with Aiden Ross on camera. So they have done stuff together, right? They've done streams together. So you can see what Nadia is doing here, right? She's taking advantage of the vague question. These girls think they're asking spicy questions, right? When they say anything, they're thinking they're asking about anything sexual, but they didn't actually say that, right? They're assuming that the implication is clear. But what Nadia is doing is simply answering their question literally. Have I ever done anything with Aiden Ross? Uh, wait, actually, no, no. How is she answering them? Or she's answering them super specifically, where she's actually interpreting it strictly as sexual so that she can just say no, honestly. Let's see here. In any Call of Duty game. Have I ever done anything with Aiden Ross? No. Aaron donated $5. True. Have you True. So either way, they're both interpreting it as being sexual. She's never done anything sexual with them, so it's easy to say no, right? Had sex with Action Man. Oh, no, oh I have not God. had sex with Action Man. That's a real denial, right? So listen to the difference between a weak denial. So the first question she was asked, right, have you ever fantasized about boys? And she says no. Or she, what did she say? She said she asked, answered the question with a question, which is a sign of deception. And then look here where she says, no, I have never had sex with Action Man. That's a reliable denial. It's specific. It covers the entire question, addresses everything. And it was said forcefully and immediately. That's what a real denial sounds like. right? When someone hasn't done something, they usually don't like to let the conspiracy linger around them. right? If someone accused you of murder, you wouldn't say, like, well, who, me? I, I don't know. We have to look into it. Are uh, why would I murder someone, right? If you're actually innocent, you say no. I've I, I did not murder him. I've never murdered anyone, right? So you you say it specifically, immediately, and forcefully. No. Aaron donated five dollars. True. Have you had sex with Action Man? Oh, no, oh I have not God. had sex with Action Man. True. And <laughs> right, that's a reliable denial. And the other one was, have you ever cheated in, a, in a, any Call of Duty game? No. True. Wow. So, she so that's a great little comparison there. I have never had sex with Action Man. Can't, I, I said that's reliable. Then have you ever cheated in a Call of Duty game? Immediately after, it was just a simple one word, no. Right? The force wasn't there. It, she didn't say, no, I have never cheated in Call of Duty. Right? It was just a one word, no. And if you've said no enough to a question, it's easy to say it. So these one word answers for me, by this point, she's been accused of cheating for over a year now, right? You can get away with, with a, a easy denial like that. So the sex with action man was a great reliable denial. And this is a great little, um, example in real time of a reliable denial and then a little weak. No. And she said it with a lot less force. She said with a lot less conviction. Have I ever done anything with Adam Ross? No. Aaron donated five dollars. True. Have you had sex with Action Man? Oh, no, I have not God. had sex with Action Man. True. And, I've, and the other one was, have you ever cheated in, a, in a, any Call of Duty game? No. True. Wow. So she's not a cheater. Wow. Oh man, that, that's a great demonstration. I'm glad she did those back to back. The first reliable denial, I'm glad I pointed it out. And then right after was the unreliable one. That's why Nadia is so perfect. Wow. I am not a cheater. The truth is revealed. Would you would you be more likely to cheat on Call of Duty or cheat on your partner? Call of Duty. True. Oh. I believe her. I also think that's true. Oh. I have a good one. I'm targeting right now. Also, a good answer, if you don't cheat and you're frustrated by people accusing you of cheating, would be, I, I wouldn't cheat on anyone. I haven't cheated. I wouldn't cheat it, right? 
you wouldn't even allow for the possibility of people to suspect you of cheating. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever thought about turning uh, Kitty into you? No. Okay. True. Wait, like. Ooh, ooh. Have you ever thought about kissing Oscar? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Have you ever been scrolling through social media and you followed a girl that you want to save for the future in case we don't work out? No. Right, it's looking more and more like Nadia is actually claiming she's a lesbian. Let me know in the comments, because if that's true, then we nailed that first question. And I'm happy about that because I wasn't even warmed up yet, right? We literally just got into this video. True. Are you Muslim? No, I don't, I don't believe in religion. True. Hmm. Are you happy? No. True. And sadly, I believe that. Um, as I pointed out, right, this is a running theme through my video, so I'm not going to harp on it for too long. But I do think there is a an epidemic of... Psych I'm not a clinician, so I can't diagnose it. So I'll just call it toxic um, traits and personalities pervading social media especially YouTube and live streaming. And I'm not sure if it's being caused by the incentives of social media or it's just strictly that YouTube and live stream are attracting these type of people with these cluster B personality traits. Um, and that's one reason I made my video a few days ago about uh, your reputation on YouTube, right? There are plenty of examples who succeed on YouTube without having to go down a sad, depressing route. Uh, so I think that's one of the most important videos I've made. Do you regret becoming a streamer? No. True. Do you regret moving to LA? Yes. True. Why? Do you hold grudges or resentment against me? Yes. True. Super donated five dollars. Have you ever tried hooking up with Aiden? No. True. Do you think I could be annoying? No. No. Yeah. At this point, saying no is too easy, right? That's the problem with these lie detectors. Personally, I like statement analysis. It served me very well. And I think the reason is statement analysis above body language or lie detector tests or voodoo or whatever else you want to do is that we have evolved to use speech to communicate, right? So it's literally part of the human condition. We evolved to use speech. That is how our brain is designed to communicate with each other through speech. And that's why it's so difficult for people to lie because it's literally hardwired into our brains and there's infinite ways to lie, but there's only a few ways to tell the truth, right? You can only describe the truth in a certain number of ways, and statement analysis allows you to determine the difference based on observations as well as studies of, you know, um, statement, thousands, thousands, thousands of studies and statements taken from police statements, taken from... Uh, you know, studies into behavioral science, um, anecdotal observations, right, that are all proven over time. So I, that's why when I see a lie detector or a body language analyst, it maybe will give us some insight, right? Someone's like shaking their head like crazy while they're affirming something. That might tell you that they're lying, but I like to rely on strictly the words that someone uses, Would you ever? <laughs> oh! Would you? Scarda donated would you support five dollars. me and Fuzi? Am I your bad VIP? Yeah, wait, Scar. No, you're not. Sorry. True. Oh no! Wait, wait. I'm, oh, uh, wait. I said, I said your favorite VIP. I thought you said a bad VIP. Kaza underscore um, donated actually, wait, five dollars. You were my favorite VIP, but you stopped coming in. So now I just don't even have like a real favorite. 
Hmm. I said, would you support me and Fousey together? No. True. Would you support... Wait, wait look what Tango just said. Tangizi donated $5. And that's one reason that like uh, these lie detector tests are so limited that everything is binary, yes or no, so there's no nuance. So if you don't ask the question perfectly, uh, someone can give you a deceptive response without technically lying, right? Like these, va like these questions that are slightly vague, um, they can wiggle through the vagaries and give you an honest answer that is deceptive, right? So uh, also, uh, lie detectors, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities in life to hook someone up to something and interrogate them. However, you will have lots of opportunities in life to confront someone and be able to ask follow-up questions and analyze their statements. Or like we're doing here, where you're watching something and determining for yourself it is, if it is true. Right? Let's say Nadia was the CEO of a company and uh, you have stock in that company and you need to decide if you need to sell you know, based on if she's about to get into a scandal. Right? Uh, there's plenty of ways where analyzing someone remotely and being able to tell if they're telling the truth or not is extremely important. And right, whether it's business or politics or anything, right? Knowing if you're being lied to is extremely important. Did you ever say IT? <laughs> Did you ever say it? <laughs> what does that mean? Yes Did you no. ever say uh, a word? No. I don't know what the hell she just said. Hey, Tango, I would never say who was in Paris. Excuse My you. Life for the Horde donated $5. Would you trade $1 million to live five years longer? No. True. <laughs> Are you picking a billion dollars over me? No. Mm -hmm. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Not, what are you doing? All right, at this point, it's clear that, that the blonde one is apparently Nadia's girlfriend or something. I bet if we watch this again, I think one of these comments nailed it. She's asking lots of insecure questions. Um, I think she's asking lots of questions uh, to Nadia, asking if Nadia would pick something over her, which is indicative of uh, some sensitivity about the relationship, right? So that, like I said, there's so many layers to this, right? We could watch this five times and uncover different things every single time we watched it. Right now, I think the high level stuff is just seeing, being able to see in real time when someone is sensitive about a question you asked. And obviously because this, uh, no one here is trying to dig down into the truth. They're not asking follow up questions. And we're limited by the binary yes or no of this uh, lie detector test. <laughs> Big boy donated five dollars. John is uh, a legend. I'm the true kidding. voice of truth. Ha ha. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like so targeting. Like, same, same. I love you, girls. Right? Why is Tango like this? Tangizi donated five dollars. I'm so sorry. Do you think John is attractive? Yes. Oh, oh, got you, John. I love you, John. Why is Tango like this, bro? Okay. You have a double thumbs okay, up. Go. I have a question. I do not like the look on her face Same. for this question. This yeah, is skip. Yeah, Yo, I'm Chad, sure. y'all see this? All right. Mm. She looks evil right now. You know, she is like <laughs> evil look. <laughs> um, oh, my God. That <laughs> okay, go. Have you ever thought about Kitty in any romantical way? Any? No. Can you give me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see yourself like with Azra? Like, do you see yes. like marrying her? Yes. True. Would you marry her right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> um. I like this question. Oh, I got you, Charlie. <laughs> okay. What? Tanchezi donated five dollars. Did you ever lie? No. I don't even know what they're saying. Lie? Has Nadia ever lied? She says no. Drum roll. I bet the this lie detector guy is going to give a thumbs up to that, right? So that's the problem when you hire someone. They want to make you happy. Lie? No, he know, I know what Tango's talking about. No. True. We don't lie, Tango. Hold we don't on. lie. They lie. 
right? If someone ever paid me to go interview them to determine if they're lying or not, don't believe anything that happens, right? It, it involves too much bias. Nadia hired this guy to come give her a lie detector test. What do you think he's going to do? They lie, bro. They lie. We don't yeah, lie, Tango. Getting, I, do you... Okay, I have two questions, actually. This one's right, right, okay. on, on, okay. you Do you... Do you um, think you underappreciate me? No. I'm gonna do this. Do you think One sad thing about this is how self-centered all these questions are. Right? These people are very self-obsessed. Right? Just an observation. You think you underappreciate me, Azra. Out of all the girls here, I think Nadia is actually my favorite. Nadia is the most likable one here in this group, which is saying a lot. True. So that's what she thinks, though. I think they underappreciate That's what she thinks. That's what she thinks. I think they underappreciate me. She thinks that she appreciates me. Iris Recognize donated $5. Do you like Fauzi as a person? Yes. True. Oh, oh, oh. Have you ever gone through Azra's phone? Without her knowing. No. Okay. Wait, I have a good one. Oh, should I ask Azra that? <laughs> yeah, y'all should have asked Azra that. I didn't think of it. I did not think of it. Jello Beats donated $5. Have you ever thought about ruining Fauzi's career? Let me know in the comments, right? If you could donate $5 to Nadia to have her ask a question, uh, to have her answer a question, it had to be yes or no. What question would you ask, right? You would have to phrase it in a way that would make it hard for her to just parrot no, right? So it's easy for her to say no, 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 right? She's barely even waiting for the question. She's barely even thinking about a response, right? That's another way to tell someone's being deceptive. They say no before the question's even complete. That's another way to lie, right? If you if you say, uh, you know, DD, have you ever cheated on? I say no, right? I'm not actually saying no to your question because you never completed your question. I interrupted your question. So that's another sign of deception that someone's extremely sensitive about something. But also the fact that she's saying no so quickly without really thinking about an answer. No. What? That's weird. True. That's a weird one. Have you ever stabbed somebody in the back? No. Oh, I have a good one. True. Okay. Uh, two. Do you talk shit about me? No. Literally a lie. I don't talk shit. I usually just say how I feel. Oh, I have another one about a situation. Big thing on him? Yeah. She talks. So this, um, I, I'm, I'm beating the point here, but he's basically just saying true or false, depending on what the girls want him to say. Day, cut, cut, certified talk shitter. Mm. Um, talk do you, think Kitty so do you think Azra has below average IQ? I actually think she has above average IQ. True. Oh. Whenever you say your body count stream, are you lying? No, but I don't know what it is. True. <laughs> do you like eating ass? Yo, you're weird. How? No. Yeah, now we're getting to the important questions. True. Do you like submissive woman? No. T donated five dollars. IDK donated five dollars. Are you afraid Azra will suddenly leave you? That's yeah. A good question. True. Someone said someone keeps donating saying, Do you think Kitty overstayed her welcome? I think that if Kitty wasn't welcome here, then I'm sorry to say this, but Fusi's really loud. He would make that a, he would make that really loud. He would like, get the so fuck no. out of yeah, here. True. Yeah. He donated five dollars. Do you think Azra uses you in any regards as a personal benefit? No. True. Is Azra the hottest girl you've been with? Yes. Your first inconclusive. Oh. What? oh my god, it's my cousin. All right, I think we can wrap this one up here. They're asking silly. Uh, actually, there's only a few seconds left. Let's just finish it out. I'll give you a final thoughts. If you have to, if you have not subscribed to the channel already, please do, and uh, please leave a comment for the algo and a thumbs up. It just helps uh, with the get the video spread out there. Um, please share it around. YouTube 
tends to throttle my videos um, for a little while every time I do a conspiracy-related video. So when I did Bob Lazar, it throttled me. When I did Epstein, it throttled me. Uh, but the sharing and the comments really do help. Do you like me more for my looks over my personality? No. True. This Azra girl, um, lots of red flags there, right? I'd be careful. Like I said, it's it's unique when Nadia is the most likable person in a room. Hey. All right, that's the end of that video. Uh, the main takeaways from that are that uh, statement analysis, if you can do it, is much more versatile. And we saw the limitations of lie detectors there, which is why I don't really care too much about the results of lie detectors. Body language, I also don't particularly care too much about. There's too many reasons why someone would touch their nose, right? Maybe their nose is itchy. Um, there's too many other explanations for why people do stuff with their bodies because, of course, we've not evolved to communicate with our bodies. We evolved to communicate with our language. Until next time, stay true.